paint by the sites you were shown at the conclusion of director David Bruckner's reboot? We have the answers. Hellraiser warning, this article contains spoilers for Hulu's Hellraiser reboot. Inspired by the complex, questions raising mythology created by Clive Barker in his 1986 novella The Hellbound Heart, the Hellraiser films have never been your run-of-the-mill horror flicks. David Bruckner's reboot, on Hulu now, is no exception and its conclusion may leave some viewers scratching their, hopefully pen-free, heads. Has Odessa Zion's heroine Riley really consigned her brother to hell and herself to a lifetime of regret? And what exactly is the fate of Yoron Fizmjik's now flayed villain Boyd? We're here to break things down. Jamie Clayton as Pinhead in Spyglass Media Group's Hellraiser, exclusively on Hulu. Photo courtesy of Spyglass Media Group. 2022 Spyglass Media Group. All rights reserved. Jamie Clayton in Hulu's Hellraiser reboot. Credit, Spyglass Media We next see a naked and hairless Boyd being flayed and having pins inserted into his body while staring at what appears to be a supernatural presence. According to Hellraiser lore, the Leviathan is a god who is responsible for creating Pinhead and his pain-loving colleagues. It is likely this deity who is responsible for the light's transformation and it is also likely that they are turning him into a new Cenobite. This theory is backed up by both the fact that it is Pinhead and his crew who have power and by the realization that the light's skin has become his new clothing. In Barker's franchise inaugurating 1987 film Hellraiser, the Cenobites are clad in leather wear, a clothing choice inspired by the writer-director's own visits to S&M clubs. In the new Hellraiser, however, these supernatural creatures are essentially clothed in the skin of their own, painfully modified, bodies. The black leather, was, a direct BDSM reference, says Buchner of the original Hellraiser. Our attitudes to that have changed over the years. That conversation's pretty above board now and it's far more acceptable. It's hardly the kind of transgressive underbelly that it might have been in 87 if you're trying to scare suburbanites out of their socks. <laughs>